Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we find tangents to a polar curve which are perpendicular to this initial line, theta equals zero. And the method I'm going to show you is true for all polar curves. But we'll just look at this one here. The equation of this curve is r squared equals a squared sine 2 theta. And so one such line that would be perpendicular to this initial line would be this one at this point here, say. would have the tangent coming down like that and it would be perpendicular then to the initial line. So how do we go about finding the coordinates of this point and any others for that matter that might be on this curve? Well, what we've got to do is essentially think of coming from the pole here to our point and this would be r and the angle that this makes with the initial line would be theta. Now if we were to construct a triangle in here just come down there with a dotted line and across there okay this would be a right angle triangle and if we take this distance as y and this distance as x then by trigonometry this distance x is going to be equal to r cos theta. And this is an equation we'll be turning to for any question like this. Now I'll show you why. And that's because if we were dealing with Cartesian axes, this being the x-axis and this being the y-axis, the gradient of any point on this curve would be given by dy by dx. And if we were to use the chain rule here, dy dx would be exactly the same as dy by d theta multiplied by d theta by dx. And we can change this to equal dy by d theta divided by dx by d theta. Now, in a previous tutorial, I showed you that if we were looking for tangents which were parallel to the initial line, then dy dx would have to be equal to zero. And that would mean the numerator of the fraction here, dy d theta, would equal zero. But when we've got tangents which are perpendicular to the initial line, that gradient is undefined. And we get an undefined gradient when the denominator dx by d theta equals zero. So that's the point that we need to make for this particular type of situation. That for points where the tangent is perpendicular to the initial line, dx by d theta has to equal zero. And that's why this equation is fundamental to all of these types of problems. Now wherever you have r in your equation here, you just substitute it with what r equals from your equation of your polar curve. Now in this example, you'll notice we haven't just got r, we've got r squared. So what I'm going to do is just square both sides. And if we do that, we end up with x squared equals r squared times cos squared theta. I'm doing this because I feel it's going to make the solution a lot easier to work with. So if I now substitute for r squared, we end up with this being a squared sine 2 theta multiplied by cos squared theta. Now I've got to head towards dx by d theta and then equate it to zero. So I'm going to need to differentiate this equation here, x squared equals a squared sine 2 theta cos squared theta. So I'm going to do this by implicit differentiation. So I'll just put here differentiate with respect to theta. Now if I do that, differentiating x squared with respect to theta well, I can't do that. I have to differentiate it with respect to x first of all, and that's going to give me 2x. 
But remember, I then have to tag on to the end of this dx by d theta when I'm differentiating implicitly. Now when it comes to differentiating a squared sine 2 theta cos squared theta with respect to theta, because a squared is a constant, I'm going to pull that constant a squared out the front of a square bracket and then just differentiate sine 2 theta cos squared theta, which has to be done by the product rule. So I'm going to take sine 2 theta and multiply this then by the differential of cos squared theta, which is going to be, by the chain rule, 2 cos theta multiplied by minus sine theta. Okay? And then to complete the product rule for differentiation, I take this part, cos squared theta, and now multiply it by the differential of sine 2 theta, which is going to be 2 cos 2 theta. Okay, so we'll just square that bracket off there. Now cleaning this up further, we've got the a squared out the front, which is a common factor. I notice that this term is going to be a negative term, but this term is going to be a positive term. So I'm going to start with that first of all. So what we've got here is 2 cos squared theta cos 2 theta. So I'll just write that in as 2 cos squared theta cos 2 theta. And then we've got this term here which is a negative term. And also I'm going to break this down here. Sine 2 theta is the same as 2 sine theta cos theta. So when we multiply 2 sine theta cos theta with 2 cos theta and the minus sine theta here we end up with 4 sine squared theta cos squared theta. Okay, so I hope you're okay with that. Okay, sine 2 theta then, 2 sine theta cos theta. Multiply it with the 2 cos theta and then the sine theta. That's what you'll get. Now I now notice that we've got 2 cos squared theta, which is a common factor both in this term and this term here. So I'm going to bring that out the front along with that a squared. That's going to give me 2 a squared cos squared theta as a common factor. So inside here that's just going to leave me with cos 2 theta. So just pop that in as cos 2 theta and then we've got here minus 2 sine squared theta. Now, cos 2 theta is exactly the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So, if I write that in, we've got 2a squared cos squared theta, but here we've got 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, but then I've got minus another 2 sine squared theta, so that's going to be 1 minus 4 sine squared theta. So now that I've got this factorized, it makes the solution to this a lot easier when I let dx by d theta equal 0. So we'll just put this in here that when dx by d theta equals 0, then either cos theta would have to equal 0, so we'll just put that here, cos theta would equal 0, or from this part, 1 minus 4 sine squared theta would have to equal 0. And if I rearrange this for sine squared theta, that would equal a quarter. And taking the square root, sine theta would equal plus or minus a half. Okay, so just put that in as plus or minus one half. Now when I look at the values that theta can take for this particular curve here, I can see that theta goes from 0 all the way to pi upon 2 radians. If I was to go outside that range, the sine of 2 theta would give me a negative value. And I can't have r squared as equaling a negative value. 
So we've got this restriction on theta. So I'll just put this here, but theta can be greater than or equal to zero radians, but less than or equal to pi upon two radians. And if that's the case then, when it comes to solving cos theta equals zero, theta equals the inverse cos of zero, that means that therefore theta is going to be equal to pi upon two. Anything else is outside this range. And for this one, well, if we take the positive a half, sine theta equal positive a half, then we get theta equals the inverse sine of a half, which is pi upon six radians. Anything else would be, again, outside this range. And we need to reject when sine theta equals negative a half because, again, that will be outside the range. So we reject sine theta equaling minus a half. Now from here, r would be equal to the square root of a squared sine 2 theta. So r will be equal to a multiplied by the root of sine 2 theta. So I should be able to get the coordinates of this point and by the looks of it because we've got two angles here there must be another line that is perpendicular to this initial line. Well this happens when theta equals pi upon 2. When theta equals pi upon 2 let's see what we get. If we substitute pi upon 2 into here, we get the sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0, so r equals 0. And so where is this particular point where r is 0 and theta is pi upon 2? Well, it's this point over here. Let's just label it a, and so therefore we've got a line, a tangent, that is perpendicular to the initial line just at that point there. So let's just label that as being A. A has polar coordinates 0 and pi over 2 radians. So how do we get this other point here? Well, if we label this B, this is when theta equals pi upon 6 radians. So when theta equals pi upon 6 radians, we can get r simply by putting pi upon 6 in here. So 2 times pi upon 6 is pi upon 3. The sine of pi upon 3 is root 3 over 2. So r is going to equal a times the square root of root 3 over 2. OK, so it doesn't look very glamorous, but that's what R would be. So the coordinates, the polar coordinates, this point B, are going to be R first of all, which is A root of root 3 over 2. And the angle is going to be pi upon 6 radians. OK. Well, I hope that's given you some idea anyway on how we can go about doing problems like this where we're trying to find the coordinates then of a point on our polar curve where the tangent is perpendicular to the initial line, theta equals zero. We start from this equation here, x equals r cos theta. And we aim to differentiate this to find dx by d theta and put that equal to zero. In this particular example, it was easier to square both sides because I had r squared. That won't always be the case. You'll just be able to substitute for r in here. Differentiate, find dx d theta, put it equal to zero, solve your resulting equations, and you should be able to come out then with the coordinates of the points on the curve then where that tangent is perpendicular to the initial line.